Okay, today on a quick DIY Dave fix it project, you've got a garage door, but you've got a problem when it goes, uh, the, the door will open with the remote uh, with the remote control, but it won't go back down. Now, a lot of times you'll hear arguments that it's your sensors are out of alignment or there's something obscuring the sensor and that's what's keeping it from working. But there's another trick that can cause these things to fail and that's what we're gonna look at today. Now, here's the problem. If you've got a garage door that's been in operation for 10 years or more and, and they have these infrared sensors, the thing you have to keep in mind is that the material used in the infrared emitter can degrade over time. And what that does is, effectively, it decreases the strength of the signal, meaning that the same signal that it put out 10 years ago is long since gone. The only way to fix that is to replace the sensor. That's what we're gonna do today. Now, with the light on, with the garage door open, any kind of light will now take this, any kind of light will interfere with the emitter's ability to send a signal to the receiving end. So what I did is I went on Amazon, I looked for replacement uh, garage door sensors and most any screw drive sensor type Genie garage door opener uses the same kind of sensors. Okay folks, Future Dave coming in here while I'm editing the video, I noticed that I do have a mistake. I said in the video that the sensors were essentially interchangeable from any screwdrive opener made from 1993 and beyond, and I've discovered that's not true. After I finished this video, I went ahead and ordered a second set of the same sensor to fix the exact same problem on this garage door that we have right here. We had the exact same problem on this garage door right here, although this one is about five years older than that one. But this style of sensor is a little square rectangular block version rather than the little, I guess you might call them torpedo style that I put on the other door. I thought they were all interchangeable. The advertisement on Amazon indicated they were all interchangeable. But when I install those torpedo style uh, sensors on this door, they didn't work. I wired them all up and the light came on steady. It indicated that they could see each other, but the signal that these send to the uh, door opener itself was confusing the garage door opener and it simply would not let them operate. It would not let the door close. And the green status light would blink five times in succession, which the manual says is a generic code for uh, sensor operation error. What I noticed was that the, the letters GSTB, RSTB, BL, garage door sensors, uh, appeared to be the same, that th those parts are the same. I think it's this part number here that I don't think appeared in the product listing that was different. So, bottom line, uh, when you order these replacement sensors, even if the numbers look the same, I would make sure that you get ones that look like your existing model, your, your existing sensors. I assumed that even though they look different, they just replace it with the superseding part number and their function was identical, but clearly it's not. I think the kicker is this particular Genie is a PowerMax 1500. They didn't so much emphasize the screwdrive aspect of it. That one over there on the other side of the garage is an accelerator. This was one of the earlier model screw drive openers. And while I, I don't think it was made as far back as 1993, we've only lived in this house since 99, so it has to be newer than that. So I still think there's a conflict in the advertisement on the Amazon product page that says these two uh, uh, sensors are interchangeable with any screw drive opener made after 1993, because this guy is a model, I believe, H8000 and clearly the sensors don't work. So, wanted to make sure you guys were aware of it. So, with that little bit of information in hand, just wanted to make you aware of that. Make sure you get the right sensor for your garage door opener. Now, back to the video. It basically uh, amounts to an emitter and a sender. This has the red LED, and you can't quite see the fact this has a green LED. So all we're gonna do is replace both sensors and that should solve the problem. Now I had grand plans of just taking the, uh, of taking this mount or taking the sensor and sliding it off of the bracket and just sliding it onto the existing bracket. But they've actually molded this bracket onto the sensor. So 
in order to take this thing off, I'd have to separate the bracket. So I'll have to get a little screwdriver and loosen the nut that holds into the wall. So um, let me take a look and see if that's, uh, that's just a Phillips head screw, I think. There we go. And I know I can slide those off, but I haven't, I've had a tougher time finding those replacements. Okay, now we've got, on my setup, that's just the way these were wired, red screw relative to the location of the green light, the red screw is uh, to the right, the, wh the uh, white wire is to the left, and the sensor is on the opposite side. So all we have to do now is loosen that screw. Loosen that screw. Not quite enough. And the terminal, so it stays nice and secure. Wrap the terminal, wrap the wire around it the same way you screw it on. And that will help it stay secure and get those I turn until they're nice and snug. Yep, green light's on, so it's already ready to go. So I will just put that right here where the old screw was, and we'll get that started. And we'll take the other one, put that through and get it where it was started. be a perfect place for a little power screwdriver. Notice the light, the one down there is still blinking. That's because the actually what I'm beginning to think is that the information I looked up originally indicated that the green was the emitter. I'm beginning to believe that the red may be the emitter because it's the one that says it, uh, it's the one receiving the signal that says this guy can't see it. And of course this one is nailed in. Okay, used a highly scientific prying tool called the pry bar to get the nailed bracket off of the wall. I did not install that by the way. And it's the same thing. Uh, here's, here's the sensor on this side. I've got the red wire on this side, white wire on that side. Unscrew. Unscrew. Go away, bad sensor. And I'm going to loosen these guys. cinched up and here's the white wire the white wire all cinched up and now if we put this at approximately the same location now so what I'm going to do I'm going to put this sensor at a I haven't gr drilled it in yet or screwed it in yet this at the same height and now notice my my red light is steady so we've replaced both sensors the receiver and the emitter whichever one is which and this is now, this door opener is going to work. All I have to do now is drill a hole and remount that without putting a stinking nail on the wall. And that should solve the problem. Okay, we've got both sensors are installed. We've got a steady green light over here. It's been attached. 
we now have the new opposite side sensor. It's been attached. The, how you attach them, I don't really care. Permanent bolt, use one of the bolts in the kit, whatever it takes to get it to the wall. And now the acid test with that steady light, this one should work just fine. So uh, my missus is over there at the button. Go ahead and hit the button. Let's prove that it works. Oh, ha! I disconnected the garage door earlier. It's working. Hang on. Okay, now the door's going up. I just ha I had disengaged the mechanism before so it wouldn't go up. Go ahead and hit the, uh, hit the button just so we prove to everyone that it's really working. We are fixed. Okay guys, I think that's gonna put a wrap on this quick DIY garage door sensor fix. This is one of those really obscure ones. Everything that you look for when you see problems with these garage door sensors not working has to do with alignment, it's gotten bent, the bracket's gotten bent, there's a loose wire, a quack, cracked wire, when in reality, these older, the older these openers get, that emitter material fails and it cannot generate a signal strong enough for the other side to see. The only real solution, aside from meddling with the electronics on the PCB on one of the, on the receiver side, is just replace the sensors and that's what we did. So now I gotta tell you, I saw conflicting information as I started researching this. I saw some information that said the, the red light, or the green light is the emitter, but the instructions on these sensors said the red light was the emitter. I don't know which, and I'm not sure it matters as long as it works. If you know, put a comment below and let us know. Uh, I tell you what, if you, if you like it, please give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing. We're not the fanciest channel in the world, but we just have fun doing some DIY projects to save you a few bucks around the house and who couldn't use a few extra bucks in their pocket these days. Thank you for watching and remember if it's worth doing it all, it's worth doing yourself. Thanks for watching everybody and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.